our first lesson is taken from the book of Numbers. Moses is speaking to the people. The Lord has been speaking to Moses about various laws, various commandments, statutes. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to Aaron, Aaron was the high priest, and to his son saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his faces to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. And it came to pass when Moses had finished setting up the tabernacle, he appointed it and he consecrated it and he furnished it, the altar and its utensils. The elders of Israel, then the fathers of the houses came who were of the tribes over those who were numbered among the people to make an offering. They brought their offering before the Lord. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, accept these from them that they may be used in doing the work of the tabernacle of meeting. Amen. Perhaps you've heard that blessing before. We use it. We use it a number of different times and in various ways in our church services. Sometimes it's simply the benediction the minister will say at the end of either the children's talk or the end of the service. And sometimes that blessing is used when a married couple come and the minister blesses them, says the Lord bless you and keep you, that whole blessing. And oftentimes, you see here the railing, the Holy Supper railing. And there may be a couples or individuals that come along here. And then when they're finished saying the Holy Supper, oftentimes the minister will say, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his faces to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Many people find that that blessing when the laying on of hands is done is one of the most powerful times that they have when they're in church. Or that blessing, even if they're not in church, but that blessing may come to them with the laying on of hands at home or at a, in another place or another function. And the Lord said, use that blessing. Put my name upon them. My name upon them. Yes, the Lord said, the Lord bless you and keep you. My faces, may the faces of Jehovah. That is, the different ways the Lord looks. But the Lord looks at us with a smile. The Lord looks at us with love. The Lord looks with us at us with concern, with pity sometimes if we're in trouble. The Lord has many faces. The faces of the Jehovah want to lift us up. So, Sometimes when we need to feel concern about what we're doing, we could think about the Lord having a face of concern for us. Not, not angry with us, not wanting to punish up us, but concern like a parent has for a child who is not feeling well. You're concerned. So the Lord's face, he says he wants it to shine upon us. Now what would that mean? I have lights shining on me. We go outside. Today's not a good day for it because it's raining here in Toronto anyway. But when the sun is shining, that idea that the Lord is shining upon us. And that comes right from heaven. The Lord is seen as the spiritual sun. When you go to heaven and you see a sun, that's the Lord. Not just the Lord, but that's the Lord shining. The Lord is much more than a sun like we think about the sun in the sky. Because the Lord is a divine, human, loving person. And the Lord's face shines through, as it were, shines through the sunshine of heaven, the heat and the light that allows angels to see and to love and to be amongst other people. So the Lord says, give this blessing to people. And right after this blessing is given, it said people came and they offered gifts to the Lord. They offered gifts for his tabernacle. And that's very much connected with our thanksgiving that we come to offer gifts. If we could be in church, we would be presenting fruit and vegetables and other things that we could be giving to other people. 
And if you can do that this coming weekend and take something to a food bank or contribute to some cause where you know people in need are going to be helped by what you can give. That's what took place right after that blessing. The people came and they gave Moses things to use for others. That really is the source of all blessings, to receive the Lord shining in on us, to use what we have from him, and then to give it to others. It's a very important message of our blessing, to give. 